So this is the examination of one of the state's witnesses, Officer Phillips, who is the officer that initially responded when Nicholas Kirby dialed 911 to report the fight or argument that they had with Jackass Brooks and I believe he lied and said there was a knife involved but I think he did that to get them there quicker um, so that's what Sue Opper attorney Sue Opper is going to question him about he's standing because he's going to be pointing to certain things on the big screen which is if you're watching this is to your left but his right so that's it should be a good one considering this is the one that somehow jackass brooks got as uh judge dora would say stricken from the record so let's watch um okay we're gonna go ahead and start the play we're at the zero mark right now Where are you going now? Pause, please. I'm sorry. Nine second. We're pausing. Go ahead, officer. So what you're looking at here is Baxter Street, and right off to your right hand side. I, I get that pointing at things in my hand isn't necessarily ideal, but the building over here is the Schutze Building. Where those squad lights are there is the parking lot of the Schutze Building. There's at least one officer already on foot in this vicinity of the Schutze building where the alleged knife fight with multiple individuals were involved. Okay, and I see, looks like red and blue lights there in the middle of the photo, or the uh, video. Correct. Whose squad is that? I know one of them is Officer Nick Hendrickson. Okay, and uh, is that the officer that you were referring to earlier when you said another officer was also trying to help you find these subjects involved in the fight? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Off to the left, it looks like there's a bunch of cars parked there. Correct. Is that uh, general general parking available to the public? That is general public parking for the Schutze building. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and play again. For the subject that we're claiming that this fight happened. Are you driving on Baxter now? I am driving down the two subjects uh walk down towards the White Rock School. Uh Hispanic male, Hispanic female. Pause it please. Whose voice was that if you know? I'm not gonna say I know a hundred percent sure on that. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Play. Pause. It's a little hard to see, but on the right-hand side, did you see the individuals walking down the street there? I did. Uh, my squad just passed. Um, I'm sorry, sidewalk. About, yeah. About two seconds prior, there were three individuals who were walking down the sidewalk. These are the three individuals that flagged me down on the passenger side of my car. Okay. So they're talking about Erica Patterson, Nicholas Kirby, and Corey Runkel. Um, and then he'll end up pulling over and talking to them. And I'm going to try really hard to listen to what they say to the officer because I didn't hear them mentioning 
anything about what Daryl did to Erica in regards to him running her over with the van. So just kind of listen and let me know if you guys heard it and I'm going to listen again. Go ahead. Let me pull over here. I heard her say something, but I couldn't make it out. My hearing isn't the best, though. But isn't Daryl the one that pretended like he couldn't hear out of one of his ears? Yeah, yeah, jackass. Yep, he was. Jackass lied. Uh, we all knew he lied. But uh, this, I mean, how the hell? If you're deaf uh, um, in one ear, how the hell did you hear that? Because I don't hear it, and I'm not deaf in either one of my ears. I I am, I have, uh, I don't know if I could say I lost some of my hearing, but I don't hear as well as I used to. I heard her say something, but I couldn't quite make out everything. But then that hearing that radio traffic about him running over those people, it just felt like someone reached through my chest and like squeezed my heart. It just, it hurts so bad to know, even though I didn't know these people, like it just hurts to know that this is where my dad lived. This is his hometown. If he would have been alive when this happened, huh, 
He would have donated so much money to them victims. Um, yeah, so I just, <laughs> anyway, let's keep watching. You hear what was just said over the radio that there was a female not breathing and no pulse? I think that's what they said, or unconscious or whatever. No, not breathing. Anyway, Jesus. Them cops probably have had to go to therapy and have are going to have a lifelong trauma in regards to this incident. It's just the ripple effect to his crime is just crazy. Was that you running away from your squad, sir? That was me running away, yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and have a seat, please. There, it was a little bit difficult to hear. When you asked Erica Patterson who assaulted her, did she tell you a name? She did not, no. She did not provide you with any names? She did not. Okay. You had her name and her date of birth, and that was it at that point? That's all I could gather before I had to run out of there as fast as I could. Okay. Now... When you got to Main Street, where'd you go? When I got to Main Street, um, as most of you probably just saw in the video, I took a westbound direction all the way down to Barstow. There were still floats in the parade. I think there was a lot of people that didn't exactly know what was happening in front of them. When I got to Barstow and exited my patrol vehicle and you saw me running down towards the center of the street, at that point, I was just trying to assist any officer, EMS, civilian, individual that was around, and it was just mass chaos, carnage everywhere. Did you attempt to render aid to some injured individuals? There was approximately two to three individuals I can remember talking to directly. They were all members of the band. I don't know which band it was. It was one of the high school bands. Uh, they were in the vicinity just west of Barstow on Main. Uh, there was a number of them laying in the street, uh, obviously injured. I had face-to-face -face contact with a few of them laying on the ground. There were parents screaming at me to help their kids. Um, I did what basic uh, measures that I could take as far as emergency life-saving goes. I checked pulses. I asked them to squeeze my finger, asked them what hurt, what they could move. Uh, the two or three I talked to could still move. They could still talk. They could tell me what hurt. There were multiple people standing around them also providing aid. At that point, uh, some of the radio traffic that I was picking up on, um, I was gathering that potentially a vehicle had driven through the parade and hit some of these individuals. I contemplated throwing some of these people in my patrol vehicle and trying to get them to a hospital. However, my vehicle just simply isn't equipped uh, to have that kind of space or room to do that. So given the fact that I didn't want to try to move anybody unnecessarily that would have caused further damage to them, especially if somebody's involved in blunt force trauma, such as a car crash. I said, if you're doing fine right now, somebody will be by shortly. We'll get you an ambulance. Just hang tight where you are. And that's basically what I had to ensure at least the two or three people that I came across. The third person I came across was also a band member. Uh, she was a female. 
Her leg was obviously injured. She was being held upright by a couple of adults. And I asked her <clears throat> what was wrong, what was hurting, uh, if there's anything more serious with her as she was being held up. And she said, officer, I saw what happened. I saw who did this. And I said, what can you tell me? And she said, a red SUV sped through the parade and did this. Uh, she didn't say anything more than that. I said, oh, okay. I was like, stay with your family, stay with your parents. Somebody will be by with an ambulance to get you shortly. These three uh, injured individuals you spoke to, would you describe them all as being about teenage uh, years? Objection. Overruled, he may answer. Overruled, he may answer. Are we going to answer to the question, to yes. the prosecution table, or to the jury? I'm not sure. He's looking at them answering the questions, but they're not answering the question, a asking the questions. I guess you don't know shit about having respect towards others. The jury is the one or and was the one that decided if you were guilty or not. Like it was their decision. He was showing them respect by when asking when the prosecutors asked the question, he looked to the jury and answered it so that they could hear him and see him talking. It's just a respect thing. But you don't know nothing about that, do you, bitch boy? Nothing. You may answer the question, sir. The three individuals that I met with initially uh, had band uniforms on, and it was my understanding that the band from that vicinity right then and there was a high school band, so I would place them all at teenage age range. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Were you aware that uh, at some point a uh, person was taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street that was related to this uh, incident, sir? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. I was made aware uh, a little while after my involvement directly in the downtown area, yes. Did you learn the name of the person who had been taken into custody? Yes. What was that name? I knew uh, from radio traffic at the time that it was a Daryl Brooks. I didn't know the date of birth or middle name or anything at that point. At some point later, uh, after the chaos had somewhat settled, did you have an opportunity to go back and try and investigate the initial complaint you had taken from Erica Patterson? Yes, I did. Did you attempt to um, identify Ms. Patterson fully through police records? I did identify Ms. Patterson fully uh, by positive ID, yes. And uh, did you learn of any uh, complaints that have been filed by Ms. Patterson in the past to other police agencies? Objection, irrelevant. Um, overruled, he may answer the question that's being posed at this point. I did conduct some more investigation after my involvement uh, in the entire mass casualty incident, when I went back to the police department afterwards and I was able to verify that uh, Erica Patterson had been involved in other police cases outside of Waukesha. And uh, specifically, could you find anything linking Ms. Patterson to the defendant, Daryl Brooks? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. I did find information through our reporting system and other law enforcement sources to directly link Erica Patterson to Daryl Brooks, yes. And did that information also directly link Daryl Brooks to a vehicle described as a red SUV? Yes, it did. Mr. Brooks, you may start your cross-examination. I noticed, uh, Officer Phillips, you are in um, uniform this afternoon. Were you scheduled to work today? Yes. So it would be fair to say that uh, you would be on duty as of now if you weren't giving testimony in this matter. I would be on duty right now, yes.
so. Carol, are you starting with your bullshit again where you try to accuse these police officers of receiving money from the state just to testify? Everybody knows that's not true. And you know it's not true. You're just trying to find some kind of something to wiggle your skinny ass out of the out of the whole case. It's not going to work. There's mounds and mounds of evidence against your dumb ass. It will also be fair to ask um, if it would be fair to say that you giving testimony right now, you're still getting paid for it? I am currently employed by the city of Waukesha Police Department on a working patrol shift on a normal shift for myself, yes. You know that Daryl wanted him to say just a simple yes, so he can make it sound as if the prosecutors are paying him, or the state of Wisconsin, the plaintiff, is paying him just to testify. But, take a look at the cop's face when he answers the question because he didn't fall into Daryl's frickin' trap at all. So with that, would it be fair to say that you are getting paid right now as we speak? Yes, I'm getting paid right now. By whom? Direction relevance. Sustain. Next question. Um, um, why are you continuing to look at uh, parties that are not asking the question? Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. So, um, in the video, it's kind of hard to hear everything that was said when you um, pulled over and interviewed the three individuals. Um, can you give a little more uh, commentary on what was actually said? Can you clarify exactly? What exactly were you told by the three individuals that you pulled over to interview? I don't remember or recall exactly what all three individuals said to me as 1078 and the screams for help by other officials over the radio were directing my attention to figure out what was also going on downtown. What I recall hearing from these individuals is that one of them indicated, one of the individuals that was not Erica, indicated that their friend had been in a fight or an altercation. So that's when I decided to pull over to try to get more information out of them. She, Erica, told me that nothing happened, that there was just a verbal altercation, that she wanted nothing to happen and she just wanted to leave. That's when another one of the other individuals said, Erica, you need to report what happened. And she still didn't want to. Uh, and that was basically about the extent of it when I just tried to get her name as these calls over the radio were coming for whatever was happening downtown that was unbeknownst to me at the time. So would it be fair to say that you do recall the commentary of the interview? I'm sorry. Officer Phillips said he could not remember or recall exactly what was said, but he did remember a small part. So, no, Daryl. Quit trying to turn things into what you want them to be. Now I will object as uh, argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. Commentary mischaracterizes the evidence. It's argumentative. So, so it would be fair to say that you do recall what was said after already saying you don't recall. He never, ever said that he doesn't recall 
anything whatsoever. He stated that because of the 1072 and all the stuff that was going on with the parade tragedy, because that's what it was, a tragedy, um, he couldn't remember exactly what was said, like word for word, like verbatim. I don't think you know what that word means, dumbass. But all you're trying to do is start an argument. You're trying to knock him off his square, and he is standing strong, and he is sturdy. Unlike you. I object. It's argumentative. Sustain. Rephrase your question. Say that you do recall what was said after already saying you don't recall. I object. It's argumentative. Sustain. Rephrase your question. Um, it, it would be fair to say that you responded to a fight at Frank Park possibly involving a knife. That be fair to say? That is what the initial dispatch was, yes. Um, was any knife recovered from that scene? or? I did not recover a knife, no. Did you see anybody with a knife? I did not see any individual with a knife. Did you learn uh, who reported that there was a knife involved? I do not know the subject's names that actually reported the incident, no. From your recollection, from your recollection, sorry. Just one second. From your recollection, um, was Erica Patterson being uh, cooperative with the information that she gave you? Erica Patterson was not being cooperative with the information she was giving me, no. Do you recall uh, if the male individual uh, reported any information to you? I believe I heard a male's voice uh, during the time that I was flagged down. I don't recall what information he told me directly. But there was three individuals that you interviewed at that time. Would that be fair to say? There were three individuals present at the time I was flagged down, yes. And one of them was a male. Would that be fair to say? Correct, yes. But you don't recall um, him re relaying any type of information to you at that time? I remember hearing a male's voice. I don't remember what information that specific person told me at that time. He sure didn't like that Nicholas Kirby was by Erica. He didn't like the fact that there was another man by Erica. I know it. I know it, I know it, I can tell. And look at that ugly ass face he has right there. Ew. Um, just so we're clear on the record. How, about how long did you
conduct that interview? Would you say was it a couple of minutes or? I'd have to look directly at the squad video for an exact timestamp. After you interviewed those three individuals, did you uh, later gain any more information of that of the incident that you were investigating at that time? I did not gain any further information regarding the specific fight that I was initially dispatched to, no. Just so we're clear for the record, you did not talk to the plaintiff about testifying. Objection. Vague. Sustained. Did you say vague? Were you contacted in any way by the plaintiff to testify here today? Objection. Irrelevant. Sustained. Do you know if there's even a plaintiff in this matter? I was contacted by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office to testify in this case. Do you know if that's the plaintiff in this matter? Generally, in a criminal case, the plaintiff would be the state of Wisconsin. That is my assumption in this case, that the plaintiff is the state of Wisconsin. So the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter to your knowledge? That would be correct, yes. No further questions, Your Honor. So, you know what, Daryl? Quit acting like you're somebody special because you're not. And to say you're done with, you know, questioning him and how you said it and just, I don't know. It's like every little thing that you do, every little mannerism, any little way you move your head, anything, everything annoys me about you. Everything. You're a little hermit crab. That's what you are. You're a hermit crab. Thank you. Do you have any redirect? Uh, just very briefly, one question. Um, you had you have been asked by Mr. Brooks if you did anything uh, to further investigate the initial <clears throat> fights that you were dispatched to. Do you remember that question? Yes. Did you, in fact, uh, relay to detectives who were working on this parade incident the information you had found out about the link between Erica Patterson and Daryl Brooks? Yes. To your knowledge, did detectives then follow up? To my knowledge, it's detectives that followed up on any further investigation regarding the fight itself. Thank you. Nothing else. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Go ahead, you have the, your next witness. Yes, I'd also like to move uh, Exhibit 1C into the record, please. Exhibit 1C is received. Thank you. Your objection is noted. Can I state the grounds, if I may? You may. There's a point in, in the video that was shown, like, during the, the interview part between the officer and the three individuals were that's not the exhibit we're talking about well we're talking about 1c which is the annotations to the map that were made that are captured by the annotation system that uh, the state just moved in and the court received okay i miss i didn't understand what was being referred to I was going to bring this up, but I wanted to wait. Until Sir, let's take it up outside the presence of the jury later on. You'll have to remind me later. I've already received uh, the video, which is exhibit number six. That video has some language in it that you made an order on. So I just want to put that on the record. Something that you ruled Sir, on. 
We'll take it up outside the presence of the jury. All right, I need to keep going on. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope people watch it. It's kind of long, 34 minutes, almost 35 minutes long. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video with Mr. Hermit Crab in his orange suit. I cannot stand him. I think you guys have watched my channel long enough to know that I just, I'm disgusted by him in every single way possible. So, give me some advice, you guys, on what you would like me to do. Like, if there's more type of videos that you guys can think of. And if you think your idea is dumb, it's not dumb. Any idea I can use. So, um, thanks for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below. Thank you.